Hello, everyone. This is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday from 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we have Katie Chaos, who is a voluntarist <laughs> infiltrating the public schooling system, spreading anarchy. <laughs> oh, <Hell> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, Katie, tell us about your experiences in government schools. All right. Well, it's definitely interesting. Um, I love the kids, number one. That's the best part about the job. Um, you know, their personalities are really great. They're talented at a lot of technical trades. Like, I work at a comprehensive school, so they go and get their academics there as well as their trade, like plumbing, cosmetology, landscape, um, auto, a whole bunch of tech fields too so they're just so interesting and they think different too so but they still are forced to take these academic courses like on the same rigor as other surrounding schools and they're still put through the conveyor belt of state tests after state tests where it you know the stuff that they're never going to use and they know they're never going to use gets crammed down their throat um, and it's just, it's such a shame that I can't teach them practical math skills that they're going to actually use in their field. I'm forced to teach them like adding polynomials and like finding the slope <laughs> of a line and triangle sum theorem and like, yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. stuff that, I don't know, the more geometry stuff is, is good, uh -huh. but what they did this year is they did away with geometry because in Pennsylvania, the only thing that's on the state test is algebra one. So like literally kids take algebra one in freshman year. They take a keystone test at the end of the year. If they fail it, they take algebra one recovery or like remediation in 10th grade. Mm. Take the test again. If they fail, they take algebra one again, junior year. If they fail that, they have to do some kind of algebra one related project <laughs> their senior year, which Ah, they're going to leave high school not even seeing geometry. And some kids are so much better at stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so just the academics is maddening. Um, stuff like that. And then what happens is they're, they're disenchanted, right? So, like, they don't want to do the homework. They don't want to study for a test. They don't want to listen to lecture or show, you know, model an example of something that's so dry. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they... Like, with all the laws and, and things in place, like, they don't have the same consequences that they should. Like, you don't study for a test, you should fail. But then you got people on the phone saying, hey, so-and-so needs to retake the test or do test corrections or, you know, do this. And there's all these helicopter professionals coming in, like the IEP teacher, or, which I am one of those too, the guidance counselor, the parent. And then all of a sudden, it's like they're not allowed to fail anymore. And I know it's a stupid <laughs> subject that they're learning, so it's, it's tough. It's like a catch-22. It's a stupid subject. They shouldn't have to do it. But then they're learning these bad habits by not having consequences. Yeah. True, they shouldn't have to do it in the first place. They should just be learning their trade. But then they learn all these bad habits from academics, and then that spills over into their job, into their technical class. And they just kind of get used to this is how it is. If I fail, it doesn't really matter. Someone's going to swoop in and save me anyway. And that is like a true tragedy. And, and they kind of associate learning with being in this awful prison-like building and sitting in a seat and asking to go to the bathroom and doing worksheets and, and awful, outdated methods. And they associate that with learning, and then they just hate learning. So, yes. oh, yeah. I mean, that's really frustrating. There's a bunch of other things, too. I mean, <clears throat> I talked to Jeff Berwick about this. We got military recruiters yeah. in the school. Yeah. Every, every week, they're doing, you know, stuff with the gym classes. They got, like, a pull-up pole outside the lunches. Wow. They got flyers. They're handing out pamphlets. They're signing people up for ROTC, um, that's kind of frustrating. And then, um, I don't know, just working with a bunch of other status. <laughs> so, so, so tell me some of the conversations that you get, like, with your coworkers. Like, do you, do you touch on some, some of these subjects with your coworkers? Like, what, what do you, yeah. how, do you, how do you approach them? It's just, it's like a pile-on effect. They kind of know what I believe at this point just from following me on Facebook. 
Uh, oh, so you're friends so, with them a lot. Like, I okay. feel like anything that I say, they know that they don't believe the overall philosophy, so they all just pile on and start, like, saying these crazy comments that they know are going to, like, either instigate a fight if it didn't already start or just <laughs> continue to, like, goad me within the conversation. And, like, I, I'm kind of, I'm not very quick-witted. I'm not very, like, on-the-spot yeah. effective. Yeah. I'm more of, like, a sit and mull it over and then come up with a good response. So that method of interaction really, like, I don't know. I don't like it at all, but I still practice it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we were talking about spanking last week, and they're all like, oh, yeah, I love spanking. I got spanked, and I'm just fine. And, <laughs> and oh, oh yeah, it's good gotta learn respect these days they're saying like all the typical things like yeah. the arguments we're so tired of hearing like the people that are anti spanking um but they just jumped on that um this week was voting because with midterm elections coming up that seems to be a popular topic Ooh. um and i just kind of threw it out there that i'm not voting and that that is like Ooh. Uh -oh. that, i feel like that's he's heel for even just minarchists no. Or, like, patriotic, like, constitutional libertarian types. That's their Achilles heel. That's, like, the, oh, no, you got to vote. Yeah. So for a status saying that, it just, fuck, blows their mind. <laughs> Sorry for using the F word. No problem, no problem. <laughs> I guess you can edit no that out. But, um, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so really interesting conversations. And, of course, they always say the predictable things with that, too. Well, you know, if you, if you don't vote, you can't complain, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just, I'm so tired of hearing these arguments. My argument today was like, I'm not giving up because, you know, my one friend said, oh, are you giving up? Why don't you just write someone in? And I was just like, you know what? I'm not giving up. I'm just not giving in. I'm not going to endorse something that I fundamentally completely disagree with. Mm -hmm. And I guess I could go r right in like Bozo the Clown or Donald Duck or yeah, something. Some, yeah, some, like some people that. do that. I heard some yeah, people do that. <laughs> which is all fine and good. But the thing is, that'll take time to go and do that. <laughs> and time is such a valuable resource to exactly. me. I didn't want to spend it exactly. playing their little political game. Like, oh, let me go pull the lever or quick check the box. <laughs> <laughs> or push the button. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's. I feel like it's it's almost. I don't know if I want to say immoral to vote, but it is kind of the most aggressive thing that gener that most people will do in their lifetime because you're literally voting for someone to go extort other people with the barrel of a gun. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> sorry to take it there, but I don't know. So it's interesting. Um, everyone just piles, 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 piles on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there, there was a recent conversation I got about voting on Facebook. There's one guy um, who's actually, you know, he's, he, I guess he would consider himself an anarcho-capitalist, but he likes to vote. Like, I, I meet some people like this. They call themselves anarcho-capitalists, but they like to vote. And the reason yeah. for that is because they say, well, if you vote to, if my vote helps to, um, how do you say, reject a, a measure that, like, uh, is going to, you know, increase taxation, you know, you know increase whatever, you know, if my vote helps to reject it, then that was a good thing, right? So therefore, voting can be good. Yeah, right. you know, um, that's why I'm kind of like borderline on calling it immoral. I, I don't really, I'm okay with people that go out and do it, especially if it's local. Yeah. Um, or like smaller, community oriented, and especially if you're voting on issues. Like, I know Derek Bros is going, doing a lot of um, city council activism with the fluoride in Houston. So I think that's good. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to play the game with issues and in your local community if you want. I mean, I probably wouldn't. It's just still not for me. But I'm fine with people that do, and I think that they do good because, you know, uh, no fluoride in the water, for example, is better than fluoride in the water. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're getting, yeah. like, or whatever the issue may yeah, be, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it is a step in the right direction. So but I'm glad that there's people that do stuff like that. I just don't know if it if it sits well in my stomach. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Derek. Uh, it's not voting, as far as I know. He's just he's going there. He's voicing his opinion, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I think, okay. Um, but uh, but still, I think even if you are participating in that way, um, I think you're still legitimizing the institution of government, which is an immoral, violent institution, right? Yep. And, yep. Uh, and that's, that's uh, <laughs> not satisfactory in my mind. You know, yeah. we have to. And also, the other thing is, you know, you can vote. Like, voting inherently is not bad when you vote every day. You vote when you buy something. You know, yeah, you vote when you, when, you, when you buy raw dairy or not, right? You vote when you go to a, you know, an herbalist over, an, over a doctor, right? So, 
So that's okay. voting every day. We vote with our dollars, right? But uh, voting applied to the political process completely uh, counterproductive and uh, violent. And definitely, I would definitely call it immoral and violent. Definitely. Yeah. I did a whole piece on that. Um, oh, you did? Oh yeah, I wrote a lot right. about that, and I, and I did a video on that. Um, yeah, that that's what it is. You know, you're. It's like people who are not capable or not expected to make decisions in their own life. They need government to do that, but yet somehow they can. They have the uh, you know the mental acumen to force other people to uh, you know uh, agree with their opinions. <laughs> yeah, at the yeah. at the barrel of a gun, right? Right, right. So. Um, and like you got to think about why do they all want you to vote? Like all the politicians, all the celebrities are saying, rock the vote. They even made like, I don't know if you saw it, there's this video with Lil Jon and Lena Dunham and no. it's it's done to um, the tune of like, Tur turn down for what? That turn down for what? Uh, um, it's turn out for what and then they have a bunch of people saying like why they're voting, like what issue appeals to them yeah. and it's just such a complete propaganda piece. I almost threw yeah. up when I saw it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I definitely want to do like a mock the vote mocking video wow, of that. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, but it has to be done right because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's like a really fancy, fancy produced video too. So, with a lot of big name celebrities, and it's like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like Puff Daddy back in the day, vote or die. Uh, <laughs> So, They're so, all just such little sheeple. Pawns. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, when I was younger, I uh, I voted. The last time I voted was uh, two thousand eight for Obama. Oh. And 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 now and the reason for that, I mean, like I wasn't really political at all. Like when I was younger, I didn't really care about politics or the economy at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I grew up in a democratic uh, family. You know, all my my grandparents, my aunts, uncles. You know, my 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 mother fiercely democratic and so vote democrat you know it's like what where else who else would you vote for <laughs> yeah. so that's why i voted you know i yeah. didn't think i didn't think much of it uh, until and then they give you a little sticker when you walk out and do they yeah. I, I don't even remember i don't know but uh but i just um then later and you know as you read more you learn more and you understand what government is and you then you you just get repulsed and disgusted by the whole charade Right. That you just don't want to participate anymore, you know? Um, yeah. You get so disenchanted. But you know what else I thought of? That's kind of, um, I don't know what the word is, but I get these little things in the mail, these little flyers, and they're basically slam pieces on our current governor. Yeah. And they're endorsing the guy that's running against him, Tom Wolf. It's Tom Wolf and um, Corbett yeah. in the state of PA. And I'm, I don't give a shit about either of them. But um, <laughs> but it, it says on the back of this endorsement for Wolf yeah. and this hit piece on Corbett, uh, sponsored by PSEA, which is the union I'm a part of. And I thought that my union dues didn't go to endorsing political campaigns or figures but it says right on the flyer you know sponsored by so right. where are they getting money to do that and they have right. a lot they're, they're nice flyers and they have nice magazines where it's like wolf all throughout it yeah so i don't know um actually that's that's one thing i kind of want your opinion on i haven't really given this much thought yet yeah um like in a stateless society, I wonder how something like unions, like would there be a need for unions? Would they have a place? I think right now they're so awfully corrupt just because of the, the state yeah. and the corruption and the lobbying and the endorsing and the money getting thrown around. I think that's a big problem, but I wonder if there's a place for them in the stateless society, if they would even be like functional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't give it much thought. I, I actually just thought about it and you're really smart, so I would love <laughs> No, you think? <laughs> um, actually, that's one topic I got into a big uh, argument with uh, my fa one of my family members. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, she um, really went off because you know unions, we need them because it protects you know employees. You know, without them, they're going to be taken advantage of by their employer. It's going to be child labor. Going to come back, you know, <laughs> child abuse in the in the workplace. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And. Uh, um, and then, but the other thing is, um, like I was, I remember talking to one of my previous patients and, uh, he was part of this, um, you know, in Tenmans, those, that factory would make those, uh, those, uh, dessert things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, they were like closing down one of their factories. And so he was, he was saying that, 
I said, I said, so are they going to close down? He's like, well, my union is going to tell me. And then we started talking about unions with him. And I, and I said, so what do the union do? You know, what do they do? He's like, ah, oh, they, they like, uh, they collect dues. And then they, uh, I guess they make sure everything is, uh, you know, they're treating us okay. And I said, can you not pay your union dues if you, if you wanted to? He's like, I, I don't think so. And I said, so it's, for, so it's forced. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is forced. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the other thing. Like, if they're so good and they're protecting us, okay, then I would want and to volunteer. Pay voluntarily. Yeah, I'd want to voluntarily participate, right? Why do I have to be forced to pay for it, right, on top of everything else? And like what you just said, yeah, they, they, are, they most often have political connections. So, um, right. and, and talking about a stateless society, you know, with unions, I don't really think something like that would be necessary at all because, you know, when you, when you remove taxation, regulations, you know, all, the, all these um, mandates that just restrict and inhibit businesses from flourishing, then it's going think, to, I think it would just be beautiful that yeah. uh, you wouldn't need something like unions to come, come up. You know, I think that unions is just, actually, you know what I was reading in the book, um, have you read Henry Hazlitt, uh, Economics in One yes. Lesson? Okay. I love that. So he talked about unions a little bit in there. I don't know if you remember, but he was basically saying how they what they do is they they enact certain laws that um, that make inefficiency more pronounced and incentivized almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, they incentivize all the wrong things. It seems like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was saying examples, like you know, you know, if it's for plum, if it's in a, you know a union for plumbers, you know, they have a pipe and. And only a certain type of plumber can do this, not any type of plumber. <laughs> it's yeah. like, and it's like a simple thing, too. It's like, anybody can do this. No, it has to be this type of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, and, and plus, I just thought about, like, if, if teachers are working for a school, let's say, or employees for any other type of business, if the boss or whoever's, you know, kind of managing in charge or whatever, if they're treating their employees awful and horribly, I feel like word's going to get out about that employer or that school, and then no one's going to want to work for them like if the employees aren't happy you can use that ostracism to kind of get the word out there hey you know my boss did this to me today and and show the proof and then that's awful publicity yeah, so yeah. I feel like that will kind of regulate itself they wouldn't really yeah, need yeah. unions like the workers wouldn't need unions to protect themselves because there's such a thing as reputation of course, so, of course. but um actually I love that book are you familiar I'm familiar with Amanda Bill Billy Rock? Oh, yeah. I love her work. She does excellent. Yeah, so do I. I really miss it, actually. I don't know where she went to, but she was she played such a huge part in my learning of all these things. And yeah. her animated series, yep. The Little White oh, yeah. oh, yeah. on yeah. Henry Hazlitt, that, that's awesome. And they're so easily shareable. Yeah. Someone that's new to Austrian economics, you could just pass them around. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I so. have an idea to do something like that with my videos, too, like some... Um, Car, uh, you know, graphic animation, cartoon, you know, do, doodle animation, something like that. And they were always like two minutes. Like, that's perfect. Yeah, I know. Two minutes and they're like, okay, I have time for this. Yeah, exactly. And like eight minutes, they're like, oh, no, I'll do, watch this later or yeah, never. <laughs> exactly. You, you have to, you know, because time is scarce, right? So you have to you have to do the quick ones first and then you save the other ones for later. And, and yeah. you know, and I do podcasts like half hour or longer and I'm like, that. I'm, I, I know that reaches only a certain a, a small amount of people that only uh would be patient enough to listen to you know videos yeah. of that length but but yeah she was excellent i love i love her definitely. and you know what um voluntary virtues i wish i could <clears throat> listen to more in the car because that's when i do a lot of my podcasts um listening and audiobook anything you can download basically so you're not using the data because oh. then that you know chips away but um you guys should get your stuff on itunes if you can i don't know if there's money uh. available for that what that entails but because oh, then okay. people can just download it on their phone and listen like at the gym or you know in the car or whatever without mm. having to worry about using their data mm. because i would love to just stream youtube all day in my car but yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. gonna eat away and then cost me money so yeah yeah i gotta i gotta look into that yeah it's true yeah like um tom woods he's on like itunes and St yep. and stitcher that's another way i guess stitcher i'm not familiar with that one yeah um but uh but yeah, like, uh, like like another thing, another interesting um, 
thing that I get into with my uh, <laughs> my mother <laughs> is uh, she always says, but what about the companies that will pollute, pollute the air That's and the water topic. and the and the soil? We need people to regulate the those. They're not doing a good job now, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's like she's like um, you know these people only care about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. They don't care about. You know, uh, preserving the environment. You know, <laughs> and and Derek Bros did a wonderful uh, video a little while back about um, how indigenous people uh, do a better job of, of taking care of their environment than governments yeah. do, right? We, you know, right. Because if all property, I mean, if if all property was truly privately owned, there would be a big incentive to make sure the air is clean and and the roads are clean or working working without potholes or whatever and. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So, I don't know. That is a tricky one, though. But, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I definitely, I, me and Jason got into a really long debate last Liberty Fest in May with, like, who would protect the trees and who would own the ocean. And then and then it just got really weird. Like, this, <laughs> this, girl, this girl was saying, like, that trees have consci consciousnesses or okay. whatever. Yeah, consciousness, which... I don't know. I mean, I care about trees, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. So, so, so when people, when somebody says that to me, you know, what about the environment? You know, somebody somebody trashing the environment. I, I think it's always healthy to put into perspective um, what our government is doing today, like in terms of you know drone strikes on weddings, you know, like <laughs> nuclear uh, detonations, and, yep. you know, you know, like uh, invasions, occupations, genocide. You know, when you put it into perspective, right. a, a, a polluted stream and genocide, which one are you more afraid of? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know? And plus, the DOD, Department of Defense, they're the, one of the largest polluters yeah. in the world. Exactly. That's so, the other they're, they're doing that too, along with killing lots of people. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. so, you know, you always have to put these things into perspective. And, uh, and like, like talking about the, you know, privatization of the ocean, I, I actually was thinking about that too, like, how would you do that? How would you private? How would you do that? It is tricky. But, like it's it's kind of fun to think about these things. No one has all the answers, and yeah. we need to stop waiting for a leader to literally spoon feed us yeah, the yeah, solutions. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that would work, but I know what is happening now is unjust, immoral, yeah, yeah. and aggressive, yeah, yeah. violent. There's so many other adjectives I can throw in there. <laughs> I, I just know that. Yeah. What happens after that? Who knows? But when there are so many creative minds in the world. I'm sure we would figure it out and do a better job. Of course. So. I mean, like, like uh, what's his name? Uh, John John Taylor Gatto. You know, he says all all children are geniuses. You know, genius is as common as dirt, right? You know, you just you, you know, if you want to allow your if you want to you know have your children flourish, all you have to do is get out of their way. You know, yeah. stop stop force you know right. force feeding them uh, useless minutia. To regurgitate on a test, right? That's yeah. That's all you, you don't need to do really anything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That actually reminds me of one of my favorite memes. I'm very much big into memes. I love them. I think they they are like an effective way to communicate, especially with the younger generation. Because seeing my kids, they have Snapchat attention spans. Yeah. yeah you gotta yeah. just you know, and they, and they treat their time as valuable too. Yeah, so yeah. I saw this one meme, it was like a little cartoon where it's a bunch of different animals all lined up in yeah. a line, like, yeah. a, like a fish in a bowl and like a bear and a monkey and, and a, a cat or like yeah, uh, yeah. all different animals. And the teacher is standing in front of them saying like, okay guys, your test is to climb this tree. Yeah, exactly. And, and, <laughs> exactly. and that's what education is, like having all these different animals with different strengths and different yeah. needs and different talents to do one task. And yeah. if you can't do that, then you end up feeling like a failure for twelve plus years. Yeah. And yeah. now with college, it's even worse. Yeah, so, yeah, that's you know, a good. Yeah, but. yeah, no, that's a good. That's a good description of government. Is one size fits all? That's what a government solution is, right? It, it does not entail. Yes. Yeah. Say again. Democracy, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and that's you know, I'm talking about college. You know, that's another topic that I uh, I talk a lot about with people because. People have this obsession with pieces of paper, you know, as if yeah. th that's that's the true significance of intelligence, you know, or wisdom is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you have this piece of paper? Whereas I think the obsession is more with the student going through the college rather than 
the employers because I think most employers kind of understand that that is useless <laughs> and yeah. most, most employers would really look at your skills and you know even if they do hire you and you have the pieces of paper but you're horrible with people why are they going to keep you you know if, if, you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're if you're insulting customers right yep that's that's another thing that's so frustrating I spend a lot of time talking to my students about this as well mm -hmm. because a lot of them are so resourceful and scrappy and good with their hands and have connections and I have this one student who is in the HVAC shop which is a very valuable field that's never gonna go away there's always gonna be a need for that and he wants to start his own business and he knows people in the field he has family members and he's good he's a leader I have him in class too and he wants to just graduate and do that and go right into the field and start you know gathering clients and going out and doing those things. I mean, he'd have to do an apprenticeship for a little bit, but he doesn't want to go to college, basically. And his parents have it in their head that, no, you need to go to college. You need to get a business degree and da-da-da. And it's just, oh, my God, so frustrating because he would really thrive. You know, four years' experience in that field would do him so much better than four years in a business school, college, or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. I'm definitely like the no college teacher, especially in my place of work. They're all so talented and skilled anyway. They don't need it if they just. I don't know. People need to get over that. I think. Yeah, and <laughs> employers, uh, parents, teachers, everybody. Like, sure, there are some professions where you need it. Absolutely, like engineering, doctors, like you know stuff like that that you need a little bit more practicing I guess but then yeah. there's others where you just you know how to do it or you learn as you go experience get get a job and practice and learn as you go and I feel like that's so much more valuable so with a lot of different things just get out there and do the job <laughs> yeah, I think and then you're not in debt and then you're not you know thousands and thousands of dollars in oh, yeah. debt oh yeah yeah that's the major thing people overlook you know we we, you, you, we have it like a given that you know being in debt is somehow noble and yeah. uh, everybody's in debt, you know, so it's okay. We're all everybody's in debt. We're all the same, <laughs> but but um, it's it's quite sad because you know they all end up as economic slaves, and uh, and you know um, student loan debt is the one debt that you can't get rid of with bankruptcy, right? You uh, yep. you you ha you have to die, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, and it's, and it's very sad. And and I remember one uh, one chiropractor I worked with, he. Uh, he had like uh, he's forty one I think at the time, and and he was telling me that his student loan does like three hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and he says by the time he finishes, yes. by the time he finishes paying at the like the payments that he's making at the time, he gets minimum payments, he'll be finished when he's eighty, and oh. and he will have paid five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> that is so depressing. <laughs> and that's and that's assuming that there's not a wealth transfer or, or a hyperinflationary economic collapse that completely destroys the currency, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. You got to think of that. And, and, and that's also actually another thing I was cons I was thinking about. Like, like so if, if, if the currency is destroyed, what happens to all the people in debt? Is that debt going to be transferred? Who I, knows? I, yeah. I, I, assu no. I assume so because I don't think that banks will just give, like, mass forgiveness for everyone <laughs> Who's in debt? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't see banks as being uh, the merciful. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. Um. Although I did see an article online the other day, student loan forgiveness is becoming like a possibility. I yeah, think. I did see that so, too. I don't know what the requirements are, but I I fear that that's another taking away consequence for young people like yeah it sucks that you're in that much debt there's no way college should cost that much by any means but like then when you just poof snap away the debt like that's you made a bad decision like especially if you decided to go into women's studies or something like that's not really yeah. <laughs> or like art history they're very interesting but you know realistically not the best choice Oh. Yeah. And then your student loan just gets forgiven. It's like you're taking away that natural consequence, even though it's an awful natural natural. Yeah. So, so we're talking about you know student loan forgiveness. Yeah, I did see that, and and basically what that what that signifies to me, like you said, it's called uh, moral hazard, where uh, we you know the person does not feel the consequences of a bad decision, and so what happens, which is the same kind of uh, the same kind of um, uh, 
basic understanding or basic kind of reasoning behind bailouts and subsidies. You yeah. Know, that a failing a failing company who has made bad choices and deserves to go bankrupt as a result of those choices right. gets bailed out Absolutely. by taxpayer money, right, which is stolen, and yeah. <clears throat> and then they continue business. And what happens? So they're basically rewarded for failing, you know, and so that encourages yeah. more reckless behavior, more, and you know, in the case of the banks, more gambling with, <clears throat> you know, with the with the public's money deposits and uh, you know and, and the derivatives market and crap like that, so so yeah. <laughs> but like all the profits are privatized, though we can't, can't forget about that. All the all the risks yeah, are yeah, yeah, exactly. socialized on us. You know they have no liability, they no accountability. But when they make their money, they're gonna get it in their pockets. So exactly. it's just so exactly. awful exactly. the whole exactly. system. <laughs> yeah. So 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 you went to college for for four years. I did four and a half. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so did you <laughs> college is just awful. Like like I said before, I'm like the type of person that like needs to like kind of I'm kind of introverted actually. Believe it or not, what? I need to like sit <laughs> Are you serious? and think about it. <laughs> no. And like like just kind of mull it over and get my thoughts together. But like all college was for an education major is all right. Get with your group. All this group projects, group projects, and like and presentations and stuff like that just a bunch of busy work and I don't know I just I hated it because I work better by myself and I kind of like need to be alone with my thoughts but when you're working in a group everybody's talking yeah, and it's yeah. like well wait you guys are saying good things but like you know I don't want to just yeah, 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 say yeah. stupid stuff so <laughs> <laughs> I need to kind of think about it and work on my own so yeah. I don't know just college for an ed major is a nightmare it's really easy like academically but it's just annoying especially if you don't really like working in groups every single time <laughs> so. yeah yeah i did uh i did about five and a half years of uh, acupuncture oriental you know herbal medicine massage therapy eastern nutrition yeah and uh and, and i loved it you know i i just uh it was not difficult for me because i loved it yeah you know, I, awesome. but i was very lucky because my uh my my parents paid fully for that, so I have no debt whatsoever. Yeah. But uh, but still, you know, it's like it's like people think of college as if it's frozen in time. You know, as if when they went to college, college is the same now as it is when they went to college. Yeah. You know, you know whereas you have to re realize reality, things change. You know, we have the internet now, we have yep. smartphones, we have Skype, we have so many things that are different that completely transforms the landscape. So. Yeah, and there's so much like filler classes too. You go two and a half years just learning stupid shit, like like literally like those filler common classes that you need to take to fulfill your requirements, but like you're never gonna use, and they're really just fluff. Yeah. They're really just to keep you there for the years and pay the money. You'll never use it. Like once college got good for me was towards the end when I was doing my student teaching. If I could have just done that right off the bat. And maybe even for a little longer, that would be so much more efficient. But colleges aren't built like that. So yeah, yeah. efficiency. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Colleges are basically, uh, you know, they're basically like, you know, it's a complex, like you know, military industrial complex. You have the college industrial complex. You know, it's so, it's so dependent on federal loans um, for their for their tuition. You know, nobody can nobody can uh, afford those tuitions at all. Right, yeah. they, most of them need federal loans. They they require it, and so you know, imagine if you have if you have guaranteed income, you know, regardless of if the person can pay or if the person is um, intellectually adequate to understand the information, right? What are you going to do with your tuitions? You're going to like push them way up, you know? They, yeah. <laughs> there's no competition. Basically, they they have right. no limit, you know. So I think uh, I remember reading. Uh, that if from the 80s, um, you know, the prices of uh, food and gas, uh, you know, basic commodities has risen like something like two to three percent, right? And similarly, uh, um, healthcare prices, similar, something like that, three to four percent. But yep. tuition has risen like ten, ten times. Yeah, times. And, and like the colleges, they have to like kind of make it seem like they need this money or they need to spend it on something, yeah. right? So what's happening now is I'm hearing about colleges with 
pools on campus with swim up bars. They're <laughs> knocking down old, perfectly good dorm buildings, high rises to build brand new ones with the suites and the yeah, jacuzzis yeah. in the bathtub. Like ridiculous things. And no one is, is really saying, like, wait, wait, this is supposed to be just like a college where you go to learn not go and like sit by the swim up bar and and like stuff like, like that and they're just spending money on the most ridiculous things colleges these days yeah so. yeah and and so what what that's what that's essentially doing is just whatever like you know whatever the federal reserve does is blow bubbles right in every sector of the economy so so yep. there is a massive college bubble that uh, is uh, like you said is uh, stimulating unnatural growth in uh, you know, in um, you know, building new buildings or hiring you know excessive uh, you know staff members that are not needed or you know just just uh, just expanding, and so eventually you know when <laughs> when when this bu bubble per bursts you know it's just going to be a massive deflation, yep. where uh, you know things are going to come back to parity where they should be. And yeah. uh, that's going to be very. Uh, I'm looking forward to that actually because yeah. you know, Speed up. Things get it will, on. Yeah, and like, then we got to make sure we have the alternative solutions in place, or at least starting to come up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like once everything falls apart, we could be the ones that rush in and be like, "Well, look at this. Look at these people. They're doing it really well." And then, you, you know, one so, one. Um, that's uh, our opportunity right there. Oh yeah, yeah. One, one, one argument I give when when I tell when I talk to people about colleges, and they're like, "Well, we need I need college. They need the piece of paper." I got. <clears throat> I say, <clears throat> "Do you know that um, mo many of the uh, of the curriculum of the the Ivy League colleges they have it are, online for free. are available for free?" <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I was fascinated when I found that out, and uh, yeah, I mean Wikipedia, YouTube, you know, Google in general. Like, what what can you not learn? Through those avenues for free, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's just mind-boggling what people can do, you know, at the keyboard just by typing in the search box. It's just so sad that people feel like they have to spend thousands of dollars for yeah. an old guy to read from a textbook yeah. <laughs> and force them. The internet, you know? I mean, it's absolutely revolutionary. <laughs> Even just like learning how to do stuff around the house. If I don't know how to do something, just type it in YouTube. There's about you know, 2,000 how-to videos yeah. on that topic. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. even just with the hands-on stuff, watch a quick video, <laughs> try it out, see if it works. Yeah. Great. So, so do you? So, so what kinds of things do you use YouTube for? Like, like how-to? Like, what have you done? Um, I don't even know. Like, how to put a door back on the hitch. <laughs> how to um, paint without tape. How to, I don't it's like stupid stuff. Mostly oh. Jason's is it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so you're saying you... Oh, the feminist. So, so you're saying you search for him, right? Yes. You do I the search and he does the reading, right? <laughs> he, usually, he usually knows how to do it already, but I'm like, wait, what's going on here? And I watch it. <laughs> but... <laughs> No, I mean, and stuff like, I don't even know, just philosophical things. Like, I was like, do you ever listen to Carlos Morales' show, Truth oh, yeah. Over Comfort? Amazing. Oh, yeah. School Sucks podcast, one of my faves. But sometimes they talk about things that make me feel so dumb. <laughs> and really? it goes right over my head. Like what? So they'll use vocabulary like, I don't even know, consequentialism. And I'll have to go look up exactly what that means or just a whole lot of other new <laughs> things. Like, yeah. They're on another level, and I'm trying to get there, <laughs> but <laughs> they have some good chats. I just can't always follow <laughs> very easily. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean with the consequentialism and the deont deontology. Uh, you've seen that word, right? Like that's another, The what? De deontology, D-O-N-T-O-L-O-G-Y. Yeah, that's like a that. new one, too. But, like, like, I mean, I mean, I was asking one guy what's the difference between that, and he gave me some, some you know, the, the reason, but... It's not really important to me. Like I understand the concept. I don't need to. I don't need to learn. <laughs> I don't need to yeah. apply a new word. Um, yeah. and, and he's like, I, I call myself a consequentialist deontologist. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I, I'm just. I'm just a basic anarchist. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I keep it simple. Yeah. You know, anarchy is a difficult enough concept for most people. So I'm like, I, I'll stick to that. Right, yeah. right. You don't want to scare people away with your big fancy words. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I mean, I'm, I learn about all this stuff. I'm reading all the time. But, yeah, uh, but you know, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh no, that's I was just laughing. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, no. um, oh, you know what else I've looked at on YouTube? Logical fallacies. I'm getting really yes. good at identifying them because they're flying all over social media. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and especially when I'm instigating a little bit more and people throw their arguments at I'm like, ooh, what did he just do there? I know that's not right. <laughs> and then there's a couple YouTube channels that give really good, like, in-depth um, yeah. explanations of all of them. So. Yeah. All right. You know, let me give an example. I was talking to my, uh, my grandfather uh, just last night and... Uh, and he's and we were talking about um, how like people uh, work and they're they're not making a lot of money now. You know, there's a lot of poor people and all that kind of stuff. And and he was I think he was basically saying about how people work hard or or they they don't work hard enough or they don't work in the right you know area something like that or they're not learning the right things. <coughs> and I'm basically saying that I think people always work hard. Like like you know, let's say the Mexicans today work really hard, right? Then you have the, the factory workers in the 1950s. They worked really hard too. I don't think you can say the Mexicans today work harder than the factory workers in the 1950s. We all work hard all the time. So yeah. if that's true, if we all work equally hard, why is it that that people are becoming progressively more and more dependent on government handouts and welfare, yeah. right? And, yeah. You know, and and the um, the poverty level is is rising. Why is that? If people working hard all the time. And I asked him that, <laughs> and he said, it's because libertarians oh. refuse to understand the importance uh -huh. of government. So something like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so basically, he completely ignored my question. So, yeah. so I guess that would be considered like a, that would be like an ad hominem or a straw man, something like that, just attacking, yeah. attacking my character. <laughs> yeah, or straw man, something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> something like that. But, crazy. But I, I mean, and I said, you know, and please answer the question. Like, <laughs> and also another great um, concept I like to tell people is that, especially when they talk about minimum wage, they think minimum wage is the problem. We, minimum wage is not high enough, you know. And mm -hmm. so I, I say, you know, go back to 1964 when silver was still part of the money. Um, right. Do you know this? You know, minimum wage was a dollar twenty-five. But right. they got them farther, and it actually had more value. Exactly, a dollar twenty-five. But the, the difference is there was silver in, in the quarters, right? Ninety percent silver. So today, mm -hmm. if you were to go to buy a silver quarter, it costs you approximately five dollars. Mm -hmm. Five two thousand fourteen dollars to buy one silver quarter. That's a lot of inflation going on. So yeah, so so just think back, and, and I tell this to my patients all the time. This is something that anybody can understand, right? Yeah. Five dollars today, twenty-five uh, silver quarter, and then they make five silver quarters in nineteen sixty-four. Now calculate that, okay? Yeah. Five yeah. times five—they're making twenty-five dollars an hour, two thousand fourteen dollars in nineteen sixty-four. They're like, "What? Are you yeah. <laughs> it blows their mind." Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. And, it, and, that, and that's fascinating because you know. Then you think about it, if you if you were to actually if you you know live for decades, right? You you know since the nineteen thirties, right? And you saved in precious metals like in gold and silver, you mm -hmm. you basically your wealth basically compounded massively. You know, of course, if you yeah. saved in fiat money or, or dollars or you know Federal Reserve notes, you, you lost incredible amounts of wealth. Yeah, but so, if you started back in the day, oh yeah, you have tremendous <laughs> tangible wealth right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, did, did you did you study at all like uh, like read any books on uh, on the monetary system like uh, precious metals? Because that's that's something that's what got me into all this stuff. No, no. Do you have any recommendations? <clears throat> oh yeah, big time. I I, uh, <clears throat> I started with um, the creature from Jekyll Island, um, Edward G. Edward Griffin. That that got me going. And then uh, Mike Maloney's um, um, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing in Precious Metals. Excellent, excellent. Uh, it sounds like a boring title, but very excellent, well, well read book. Um, and then there's another one. Um, um, it, it's like um, how it's like they own you by means of a toxic currency. Wow. And, and that was fascinating too. And, and I tell people that that's another fascinating thing. You know, if I want to talk, start talking about these topics. The monetary system is an excellent starting point because everybody uses money, right? We all have to use money, but nobody really understands money. Nobody, right. you know, yeah. or very few people, I'll say, you know. And so what I do is I take a dollar bill and I say, okay, I, I deconstruct all of the words on the dollar bill. That is fascinating. Yeah. I, and, that, and that's what I learned from that book, 
they own you by means of a toxic currency. Fascinating book. I, I highly recommend it. So, you know, okay. you know, you start off with <clears throat> the title. It says Federal Reserve Note. You know, this is a Federal Reserve Note. This is not a dollar. It says U.S. dollar, but that's a misnomer, right? A dollar mm -hmm. before, 19, before 1913 was one of an ounce of gold, right? That was the, okay. the significance of dollar. Yeah. It was a receipt. Right. It was a receipt on gold. Yep. You know? Cool. Yep. <clears throat> And so what happened, you know? So, and then, you know, Federal Reserve, then I go Federal Reserve, it's not Federal, it has no reserves. And then what does note mean? It's a promissory note, an IOU or a contract, right? It's a sign, it's a, a symbol of debt, <clears throat> you know? And then, yeah. you know, so, so I go through the whole yeah. thing. And um, I'm trying to think, oh, and the Fed I read, <clears throat> that was pretty good. That was not probably as in-depth as those books that you mentioned, but that was good by Ron Paul. And the yeah, Fed. cool, cool. So, um, so actually, you know, let me ask you that. How did you, like, your evolution to <clears throat> volunteerism, like, how did that happen? Um, well, actually, it started <clears throat> with, I found Glenn Beck <laughs> on TV a couple years ago, like, back in 2009, 2008-ish. So that started, like, I made the trans transition, <clears throat> like, conservative, whatever, was listening to him. And then I kind of idled there for a little bit. And then I started getting, like, mad about all the things that the Republicans were doing. And I found Ron Paul um, and a lot of other Internet people, um, like Amanda Billy Rock, um, Julie Borowski. Yeah, yeah. Libertarian yeah. girl. I found oh, yeah. her oh, yeah, she's good. two years ago. I loved yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just things like that, I was very much into Ron Paul, and then I, I idled there, too. It's so funny how you just get in the groove, and you just kind of stop thinking for a couple months, <laughs> and you just kind of idle, or at least I did. I got busy with life, and then um, I guess I found, like, Adam Kokesh, yeah, you know, yeah. the Billy Rock, um, Stefan Molyneux, and, and so I started much. watching them just on the internet, and it just went up from there, because then I'd, I'd hear about books, I'd hear about other people making videos or podcasts or whatever, and it just phew, shot right up. <laughs> so, and we're still learning now, right? Yeah, yeah. Always, always. You know, it's like, yep. like one thing that I wanted to get into is I want to learn more about history. You know, because yeah, so so many of of the knowledge of history is from our government school. That you know what we were taught there, right? So. I think Tom Woods does a lot with that with his <laughs> Liberty Classroom. Yeah. Um, I know he makes courses for Ron Paul's homeschooling curriculum, and then he does stuff for his own. I think he does focus a lot on history, yeah. so that, that's really interesting. Also, um, Bay Quaker, Ben Stone, he has a podcast. I think back like maybe a year or two ago, he was making a lot of history podcasts focusing on like the wars, uh, things like that. So they're really interesting, yeah. and he is a good storyteller, so you just kind of get sucked into it, and it's, it's just very engaging. So <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't have a, a YouTube channel though, right? I, I checked. Good, he really should. <laughs> I know. I I, I, I just checked his uh, his website. It's just it's just podcast right on his website, right? Yep. Yeah. And then he does put them on on iTunes too, but okay. Kind of slowed down. He he co-hosts the Freedom Fiends. Uh huh. So I think he's doing more of that than his own show, uh, but I see, I see. he has a lot of uh, podcasts from 2013, 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, and uh, and you know I was, I was very much influenced by Murray Rothbard's book, um, yeah. a couple of his stuff, Anatomy of the State, uh, What Has Government Done to Our Money, um, The Case for the Hundred Percent Gold Dollar. Um, and then I bought a bunch of his other books. I'm, st I'm still have yet to read them. Yeah, <laughs> I have so many books on my well, list. I think a lot of his books are on audiobook format too, and I'm a big fan of audiobooks. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, I think most of them are. So. <clears throat> I, yeah, I like I like audiobooks, but then at the same time, I definitely love to read. I want to have. I, yeah. That's the thing with me. I love physical books. That's, I have yeah. an obsession with having the physical. You're not a Kindle person. <laughs> no way, no way, definitely not. I have no Kindle. I have no. Uh, yeah. I don't know what there's another one, the Nook, I think it's called, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and it's kind of annoying because like Carlos Morales, he put out his his recent book, Legally Kidnapped. Oh, and I it's, forget that. Yeah, and, and actually you should you should check it out quick because he's offering it for free uh, on Kindle for like I don't know until when, but I, I saw it either yesterday or the day before for oh. a few days. Okay. So check <laughs> check that out. And, and I definitely will. <laughs> And I tried to contact him to ask him, like, can I order this? Because I want a real book. I don't want, I don't have a Kindle, and I, yeah. and I want to read it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I always loved, I always loved the physical, you know. <laughs> That's just me. I, 
Do you have like a big library in your basement or anything? Oh, massive, massive. I just, I just yeah. hoard and hoard books. You know, <clears throat> that, that's the thing. I think, I think you know, growing up with me, um, that's what really um, inspired me to want to uh, learn new things. Is having books around. Yeah, and you just I love, <clears throat> yeah. Like I always love books. It's just now I, I wish I had the time to like sit down and read. But I remember reading a bunch of like really philosophical things like back in middle school. Like I don't know if you've heard of um Zen and the Motors Zen yeah, and the yeah, Art. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that book. I read it in middle school, and I was like, I was obsessed with that. I think I might have read it even twice or three times. Yeah. Um, and just things like that. I, I'm a big fan of Malcolm Gladwell. I think he does excellent work. Um, know, he writes like the Blink and Tipping Point and, oh. you know, David and Goliath type books, usually with a white cover okay. if you go to Barnes & Noble or whatever. Yeah, he writes good stuff. And there's a good amount of research in his books too, and it's always really interesting. So, so you, read, you read fiction or mainly nonfiction? Or He's like nonfiction, yeah. <laughs> um, fiction. Yeah. Now I know this is like a kids' book, but I am a big fan of Hunger Games. Oh. <laughs> the the themes in that are very much in sync. Yeah, with yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I really <clears throat> like to see that, especially for young minds. So that was probably the last piece of fiction I read, which is really sad. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that. Um... That nonfiction is so much more uh, fascinating and shocking than anything that <laughs> somebody can conjure up in their imagination. So, like, why would I even go to the to the uh, <clears throat> the unreal, the fantasy world when when the real life is so much more? Interesting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so, like, I, I, the only um, the last fiction book I read was The Life of Pi. Have you read that one? You heard about no, that? No, I haven't read that one. But uh, yeah, so thanks. so I, I read about I read it because I think I got it for for my birthday by my grandfather. And of course, you know, when you get something from your grandfather, you have to read it, right? So, yeah. so <laughs> I read it and, and I didn't know it was fiction. That's the thing. That's the other thing why I willingly read it. I'm like, wow, this, you know, I thought it was nonfiction. And it was yep. fascinating. I loved the book, you know, about it. You know, I don't know if you know the story, the Indian kid uh, yeah, from India and then and his so family. There's like a tiger, right? Or something. Yeah, yeah his family owns a zoo and then, and then so they're transporting all the animals over the ocean. And there's a big storm and he and ultimately it's, it's just alone him. On a uh, on a lifeboat <clears throat> with a, with an adult male Bengal tiger, and uh, you know, and there were other animals, but the tiger ate all the animals, and so yeah, it's just his his story about surviving with the tiger, and um, and that was fascinating. It's a really cool book, and I, and I I was actually on my way to rereading it, and until somebody told me, you know, that's fiction, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, that's not fiction, and then I went online and I saw that it won the fiction award. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and like that's it done <laughs> I, I guess i'm i'm pretty uh how do you say um mer you know i have no compassion for <laughs> fiction right <laughs> i don't know i was like i don't want to wait you know time is a limited commodity right so if i'm going to spend time reading something i want it to be that's a good, good learning experience you know yes. that, that's just me like are you, you're the same way yeah yeah <laughs> definitely yeah so 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 what are you reading now any um, books actually, there? Bitcoin, uh, the anonymous Bitcoin book ah. by Christoph Atlas. He ah. is a local Philly activist. He's ah. very nice, very um, informative, very passionate, and he wrote this ebook. And you can buy it at anonymous Bitcoin or anonymous Bitcoin book, I think. Ah. Um, dot com. So it's really good. I'm about halfway through that. I don't get a lot of chances to read, but when I do, like, ooh, during in-services, <laughs> I just take my iPad and nice. <laughs> flip through the pages there. But, um, <laughs> yes, that one's really good and really useful, especially if you want to start using Bitcoin in a more undercover way without really having your identity ta attached. Um, I'm trying to learn a lot about that. that. That is a really fascinating topic to me, like how to get... Bitcoin kind of like off the grid and use paper wallets and cold storage so that you don't get hacked. I'm still kind of scared of that. I know it's pa silly, but I don't know any of those terms. What's the, what do you mean, paper wallets or um, like something that's not on a hot wallet like Coinbase or blockchain? There's um, I saw a really good actually video on it, BitAddress.org, um, and it just generates addresses, and then you print it out and or you know save it to your flash drive and 
have people send Bitcoin there and then it's like off the matrix, like off the internet. Yeah. So I don't know. Cool. It's, it's interesting. I still gotta learn more about it, but I definitely don't want my identity connected. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want my money to be stolen. Of course. Like yeah. right now I'm just using Coinbase and I have a tiny amount yeah. in there. So so, 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 did you you converted some of your money to Bitcoin, or or, or how did you get? Yeah, I, I have <laughs> just not even a whole lot. Um, I got like, have you ever heard of Change Tip? It's a really cool thing yeah. on it. Yeah. So someone tipped me what on. Is it? it? It's like you you go on social media and you leave them. You leave whoever you want to tip like a moniker. Like, hey, I'm gonna get you a beer. Cheers. And like the word beer is attached to a Bitcoin amount. Okay or dollar amount or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's in Bitcoin. And then they tag you, and then the change tip people say, hey, you know, so-and-so sent you a tip of this amount, and they give it in U.S. dollars, but it's really, like, in Bitcoin. Click here to retrieve it, and, it like, you click, and they give you a wallet and everything, and cool. it's really cool. And then you attach your, like, you attach your YouTube name to it, so then if someone tips you again using change tip, it goes right to that wallet. It's really cool. I like it. And then Coinbase, I bought something. I bought a t-shirt from another affiliate activist, and he sent me the change in Bitcoin. Cool. So that's what I have in there. And I've just been using that tiny amount to learn how to use online or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Cool. I haven't really put a whole lot in it because you don't want to attach my bank account to it. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh... I have a, a wallet on uh, blockchain.info, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Not, uh, yeah I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm spreading myself out, you know, with silver, mostly silver, some gold, and, and yeah. a little bit of Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, because because my education was more so focused on precious metals, like like you know, I was studying a lot of Peter Schiff and and Mike Maloney with GoldSilver.com, and you know, I just I just follow a lot of precious metals newsletters, so. Um, you know that's great. Yeah, like precious metals has its advantages and disadvantages compared with Bitcoin. The advantage of of, uh, of precious metals is that it's it's tangible, it's real, you can hold it in your hand, right? And the disadvantage of precious metals is how easy is it to transfer that overseas, right? And it's monumentally difficult, right? You know how many people get their their cash confiscated by TSA? Not to mention even gold coins or silver coins, right? <clears throat> so. So, um, yeah, so, and then Bitcoin, you know, you can like, you know, it, it doesn't really exist. You know, you don't have to, you know, put in your wallet, you know, you go anywhere, you can access your Bitcoin, yeah. right? Yep. So, so yeah, it definitely has its advantages. And, and I think, uh, I definitely think that we're drifting towards a more digital, um, you know, um, economic system mm -hmm. right now. And you can't, you can't avoid it. You can't like you know, you isolate yourself from it because if you do, you're just um, putting yourself at an enormous disadvantage. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's a great form of agorism. Yeah. It's the most prominent form. I just, I wish I knew more about it. Yeah. I think it's great though. Anyone that's developing platforms for Bitcoin, I, I would, you know, love to donate or share their information. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> Do want to take any more of your time? So let let everybody know where they can find you and your uh, work. Oh yeah, definitely. You can find me on YouTube, Katie Chaos, K A T Y, and then Chaos with a K, K H A O S. And for Twitter, it's just Katie underscore Chaos. Um, and that's it. I don't have a Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I have a personal Facebook, but I don't really share that one. So, <laughs> so, no, so no, no website, right? No, no website yet. Oh, just, you got to get a website. I know. I should get a blog or something. Yeah, I mean, just for your videos, you can put on there. You know, it's a, it's a great, yeah. it's a great thing. And uh, I don't know if you expect to do. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, if you you're gonna, you're gonna start doing some writing, that'd be, that'd be great too. You know. Yeah, like get a blog spot or a WordPress or something. Yeah, yeah something simple. You know, it's uh, it's just a good way to um, to put everything together in one place. You know, so you know you can yeah. link your Twitter, link your. Uh, your um you know, I guess you have you have a Facebook page, right? You have Katie Cow's Facebook page? No, oh, no, not okay. yet. No. Okay. Well you should do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, the, you know, the YouTube, the the Twitter and then uh you know, if you write any any uh, article short articles definitely put it in there. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, All right. well, it's so great to talk to you. Thank you very much for the interview, for the opportunity, Katie. Um so this is uh Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.